Hello and welcome back to Spring Boot Essentials course. Uh, in the previous class, we spoke about this picture that you are seeing right now, and we used the building analogy to explain about services and how Spring Security will secure the services. In this class, we will talk about how can we code based on what we saw. So the first thing we need is uh, actually the building itself. We need the service endpoint and operations. And that's what we are going to do. So I'm going to use IntelliJ here. Uh, I will create a new project. Click on create a new project. Uh, let me see, let's use Spring Initializer. So you can think as the company that will build our building. Uh, click on next. You can leave an example, demo, I will just change the name here, uh, Spring Boot Essentials Course Demo. And let's click on next. Let's keep the same way using Maven. Remember, look at the picture, the Spring Security will be introduced on our service by Maven. So that's why we are creating here a Maven project. So let's click on next and we are working with services that will be serving an HTTP request. So let's add the web uh, dependency. So on, select here web and then click web. Then click next and you can click finish it. Okay, so we have here our basic project. You can see the pawn.xml, and we have a lot of information here, our dependencies, and we have the dependency we just selected. And this guy here is the one responsible for managing the dependencies. Okay, now what else do we have a key uh, here from the initializer? You can see that we have here a class called demo application. Well, this demo application has Spring Boot application annotation. This annotation will do everything that you can see here. It will scan the, the base packages that we have here on our project. And once they find something that uh, is actually a configuration or something else that can be used for Spring, it will auto-wire uh, auto -wire automatically. So that's why we have this Spring Boot application annotation. So our server is ready to go, our service, and now we only need, uh, let me see, endpoint and operations. So let's create a here under the con.example.demo a new package called, um, let's call endpoint. And inside this endpoint, I would like to keep the same example that we are have uh, we use it here I will call floor I will call first floor endpoint okay we have our first floor endpoint so how can we say that this is actually one endpoint besides the name here well we just have to use two annotations one the rest controller because we are working with services and the second one we need request mapping what is request mapping is the location of this endpoint so once they type on the URL v1 dot floor one it will go directly to this endpoint and now what we need operations for this endpoint let's call um, let's create two operations here the first one uh, response entity the return will be response entity um, let's call enter office one so I'm creating here the office one and I will create the office two down here now let's say that uh, we are going to see a message once we enter inside this office one. Let's change the name to office two here. Return new response entity. This response entity will automatically uh, change 
everything that we need. So if you are sending an object, it will make that object a JSON object. But right now, the only thing that we need is to display a message. You are inside Office 1 and say that the request was OK. So right now we have everything that we have on this picture. We have our services, that is our demo application. We have our endpoint, that is our first floor. And we have uh, our operation, that is Office 1 and Office 2. Let's copy this whole line here and paste here. And let's say that you are inside Office 2. Now we only have to say the type of the request. In this case, will be to get requests. The first one, it will be for Office 1. So we are mapping this method to this name, Office 1. So when the user type localhost, uh, any port, view1 slash floor1 slash Office 1, they will go inside this method. And we will copy and say here, Office 2. Now that we have all these informations we have everything that we uh, can see here except for the spring security let's uh, run our application okay we can see a few a few things here uh, for example the port is 8080 and we have a few mapped endpoints especially our two endpoints that we just created uh, the first uh, first floor, floor one, with office one and office two. I'm going to use Postman to make requests for these endpoints. So, localhost 8080, uh, v1, uh, floor one, slash office one. Send. We are inside office one, two. We are inside office two. So this view one here is because as we are working with uh, services, if we do something that will break the customers, the client uh, front end or any application that is actually using our endpoint, we will make uh, another version to avoid uh, breaking their codes. So we have everything here from this picture except the spring security now we are going to add the spring security and as we can see here on the, this picture we are going to use the maven now let's go to pon.xml and let's add here a dep uh, dependency called group id arg dot uh, spring framework dot boot and we will add spring boot starter test. Once we do that, uh, actually it's not test, security, starter security. Once we do uh, the security, we don't have to use this version because we have the version right here. The spring boot starter will download everything that we need without us uh, being worried about what kind of version we have to use. That's why we are using the starter dependency. So let's enable auto import and IntelliJ will import everything. If you don't click there, you can click right, right button here and look for Maven and then re-import. Okay, now we have Spring Security on our project. Once we have it, if we start our server again, our our service is uh, kind of secure. It's using the def default security password. This password will be generated every time you try to, every time you reboot your server. This is just uh, the default thing uh, created by the, the, the Spring team. And now if you want to access any of these operations, you have to authenticate. You can see that uh, full authentication is required because we just added the Spring 
security. So just by adding this dependency here, we already have some kind of security on our service. So if we want, we just have to change here the type of authorization. You can see that we are still using get to basic. You can use here user and the password, the password generated right here on the console. So just copy and paste it here. Update request, you will see a reader call authorization. And we have this value basic and this is not uh, encrypted. It's just a basic uh, base64 URL, just to keep the, the information short. Now, if you click send, now you have the same kind of access you had before. But our application is not secure. Why? Because remember, once we have Spring Security, we need security configuration. Now, to use, to create the security configuration, we are going to use another package here called security. So create another package, security. And let's create a class called security config. Exactly like here. Now, inside the security config, we need two things. First one, enable web security. And you can see that now uh, the spring here is recognizing this and we gotta extend another class called web security configure adapter now we need one method let's override uh, I can press ctrl o and look for a method called configure HTTP security now, inside this configure, it's where we will define our rules. So, for example, uh, as we are working uh, in a closed environment, I would like to disable some uh, features that they offer to us. For example, cars and the cross-oriented cross uh, resource sharing and cross-site request forgery. Um, just disable and I will ask now to authorize requests but authorize requests is where first let's uh, authorize the request that is a post imagine that we have a page that will uh, create the users for us so if you are created users we cannot uh, we can usually we don't ask for permissions for roles so here we are going to say that for HTTP uh, post for the pattern I'm say imagine that we have our page called sign up we are going to say that we are going to give full authority to everybody now let's secure our application let's secure our operations office one and office two first let's secure the whole floor the first floor and the second floor Let's call int matchers again. Let's say that uh, everything that is started with something here can be version one, version two, version three, four, one, and all operations, all offices inside the floor one will now need the role user. Control D. Imagine that if we had for two that we don't have, but following the example, we will need admin. And what kind of uh, operation we are going, what kind of authentication we need, we want. Now, if we go to the second picture, remember here that we used uh, jjot, but right now let's uh, do with HTTP basic so and dot HTTP basic well before we do this let me show you we now have uh, roles for accessing our endpoints let's reboot our server we have a new password let's copy 
postman user control v let's update the readers and click send and now we have access denied why because this user doesn't have any roles that's why we have access denied so it doesn't matter if we try to access with security and password because we will have authority to go to use our service at least to go in but we don't have authority to access uh, any endpoint because all of them are request some kind of role now remember that we are asking here as the picture who you are we already know now we have to look into the system and find uh, the guy or the girl by load user by name by username now let's go and let's create here another package called service inside this service we are going to create a custom user details service so custom user details service and we are going to implement the interface called user details service now the only method we have to override is implement user details service is the load user by username so as you can see it's almost like we are finishing this picture so now we have load user by username but we don't have any database so let's return uh, a user hard-coded so return new user if you ask me where this user is coming from is coming from the spring security core inside this user we have a few information uh, like password username all kind of uh, things that we use every day for uh, checking if a user is logged in or not now the first one uh, is username let's say batman and let's give a password for batman let's call pass and now we need an authority otherwise this user won't be able to access any operation let's call authority utils dot create authorities I mean everything that I'm doing here should come from a database role user okay now I have the role user here load user by username now I'm going back to my security config and I will create a constructor here actually I will create first private final custom user detail service just a small attribute and I will create a constructor and authorize auto wire this custom user details service now that uh, I have this custom user detail service we cannot authorize it because I forgot to say that this guy is a component so the spring will be able to look into it now just by doing this right now if we reboot our servers we won't see these anymore as you can see we don't have more that user the default user because we have our own custom user details service now we have to make a few changes here to say what kind of authentication we are going to use and and I just want to use HTTP basic authentication now that I have HTTP basic authentication I'm going to reboot again the server if you see the, this picture we have everything here authentication is asking who we are we are going to use this find uh, load user by username we are going to find this guy we will have a uh, few information but we cannot access this information because we are not returning to the user as I said we have different types in this case we use jot but right now we are using HTTP basic but these steps the security context is still valid so let me show you now we have uh, our user 
batman and we have the password pass update the request and then try to access office one and try to access office two okay so william you said that we can have different access even uh, on the same floor now how can we do that first let's add here an annotation called pre authorize and let's say here has any row admin now I'm saying that this method even inside the floor one need act, uh, the role admin now with this role admin uh, I will be able to block any kind of users with only role user now let's go back to security config because in order to this annotation work we need another annotation here called at enable global security global method security and pre post enable true otherwise that annotation won't work let's reboot our servers and let's execute and now we have access denied if we try to access office one we still can access okay William but you said about the spring security context what about our authentication let me prove to you security context holder uh, dot get context dot get authentication and I will use here one I will print and I will create a breakpoint now when I try and access this you can see right here that we have inside the security context our user so you can see principal user details you can see the username the password is protected of course and we have all other options so it means that the user was authenticated and also it was added here to the security context now the authorization filter is always asking always getting the information from this authentication now what happens when this uh, the, this method finish it and return well the security context once the method is finished will be deleted so you don't have to worry because the security context is thread local so it doesn't matter what happens next because once the the user get his response that object that security context context will be completely deleted okay so this class is a little big so next class we will do the same thing as we did here we are going to work with uh, jot token so but right now I proved to you that everything that I explained here uh, actually work it now see you next class and bye